It is the most extraordinary thing, Bill, that a normal dishwasher busboy could grow up to be this. The rise of NVIDIA. From Denny's to $4 trillion, the company powering the next industrial revolution. What do ChatGPT, self-driving cars, and the most advanced AI systems on Earth have in common? They all run on chips made by a company that was founded in a Denny's restaurant booth by three engineers who had no idea how to start a business. This is the story of NVIDIA, the company that just became the first in history to reach a $4 trillion market capitalization, and how a Taiwanese immigrant who once cleaned toilets for a living built the engine that powers the next industrial revolution. The Humble Beginnings Our story begins on February 17, 1963, in Tainan, Taiwan, where Jen Husun, Jensen, Huang, was born into a world of uncertainty. When Jensen was just five years old, his family fled to Thailand, escaping the political turmoil of their homeland. But Thailand wasn't their final destination. At age nine, Jensen's parents made the heart-wrenching decision to send him and his brother to the United States, alone. They ended up at the Oneida Baptist Institute in Kentucky, a school for difficult children. Jensen's first job in America? Cleaning toilets in the school dormitory. But rather than breaking his spirit, this experience forged something extraordinary, an unshakable work ethic, and the belief that no task was beneath him if it helped him achieve his dreams. This determination showed early. At 15, Jensen placed third in junior doubles at the US Open Table Tennis Championship. But his true passion lay elsewhere, in the emerging world of computer technology. Jensen graduated high school at just 16 and headed to Oregon State University, where he earned his bachelor's degree in electrical engineering in 1984. But Jensen wasn't done learning. While working full-time at AMD and LSI Logic, he pursued his master's degree in electrical engineering at Stanford University, graduating in 1992. The Silicon Valley of the early 1990s was a different world. Personal computers were becoming mainstream. Into binary code. Now users could type whole lists of instructions into a computer rather than flipping those damn switches. But graphics were primitive. Most computers could barely handle simple 2D graphics, let alone the complex 3D worlds that gamers were beginning to dream of. The idea for NVIDIA was literally born over breakfast. In late 1992, Jensen Huang, along with his colleagues Chris Malakowski and Curtis Prem, met regularly at a Denny's restaurant in East San Jose. Why Denny's? Because Jensen had worked there as a dishwasher and busboy. He knew it was quiet, had cheap coffee, and they could talk for hours. Malakowski, an engineer from Hewlett Packard and Sun Microsystems, brought hardware expertise. Prem, who had designed the first graphics processor for the PC at IBM, brought graphics knowledge. And Jensen, brought vision, the ability to see a future where graphics processing would be essential to computing. On April 5, 1993, Jensen personally signed NVIDIA's Articles of Incorporation. Their initial capital? Just 600, 200 from each founder. But they had bigger dreams. The name NVIDIA comes from the Latin word NVIDIA, meaning envy, because they wanted their competitors to be green with envy. Their first headquarters was in Prem's townhouse in Fremont, California, with just $40,000 in the bank. But here's what they didn't tell you in business school. Starting a company is brutal. Jensen later admitted, if we had realized the pain and suffering, the vulnerability and the challenges we'd endure, the embarrassment and the shame, I don't think anybody would start a company. NVIDIA's first product, the NV1, was a disaster. They had chosen to focus on quadrilateral primitives instead of triangles, a fundamental mistake that nearly killed the company. By 1996, they were down to one month of payroll. Salvation came in the form of the Riva 128, released in August 1997. This was NVIDIA's first successful product, and it saved the company from bankruptcy. The Riva 128 sold over one million units in its first four months, finally putting NVIDIA on the map. 
This near-death experience created what Jensen called the unofficial company motto. Our company is 30 days from going out of business. He would begin presentations with these words for years, keeping the team focused and hungry. In 1999, NVIDIA released what would become one of the most important products in computing history, the GeForce 256, marketed as the world's first GPU. This wasn't just a graphics card, it was a revolution. The GeForce 256 introduced hardware transform and lighting, taking the computational load off the CPU. Gamers firing up Quake 3 Arena for the first time were stunned. It was like seeing their favorite game for the first time. Jensen had made a prescient bet. Video games would become the perfect test case for parallel processing. They were computationally demanding, had high sales volumes, and pushed the boundaries of what was possible. This created a virtuous cycle. Better graphics drove more game sales, which drove demand for better graphics cards. But Jensen saw something others missed. In 2006, NVIDIA launched CUDA, Compute Unified Device Architecture. This wasn't just about making games prettier. It was about transforming GPUs into general-purpose computing powerhouses. CUDA allowed researchers to harness the parallel processing power of GPUs for scientific computing, medical research, and eventually, artificial intelligence. It was a $10 billion investment that lost money for years, but Jensen believed in the vision. While others saw CUDA as a niche product, Jensen saw the future. He understood that the same parallel processing that made video games possible would eventually enable artificial intelligence to flourish. The vindication came in 2012 when researchers at the University of Toronto used NVIDIA GPUs to achieve a breakthrough in deep learning. Suddenly, every AI researcher in the world needed NVIDIA's chips. But the real explosion came in November 2022 with the launch of ChatGPT. 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 OpenAI's breakthrough showed the world what was possible with AI, and every major tech company rushed to build their own AI systems, all powered by NVIDIA's GPUs. Today, NVIDIA's H100 and A100 GPUs power the data centers that run ChatGPT, Google's Bard, and virtually every major AI system on Earth. Connects hundreds and thousands of DGX nodes into an AI supercomputer. These chips sell for $15,000 to $50,000 each and demand far exceeds supply. On July 9, 2025, NVIDIA achieved something unprecedented in corporate history billion dollar market cap, uh, which no company's ever done, Jim. It became the first company ever to reach a $4 trillion market capitalization. This milestone came just two years after the company first hit $1 trillion, making it the fastest rise to $4 trillion in history. This surge made Jensen Huang one of the world's richest people, with a net worth of $140 billion. The boy who once cleaned toilets now owns about 3.5% of the most valuable company on Earth. To put this in perspective, NVIDIA is now worth more than Apple, Microsoft, or Amazon. It has a larger market cap than the entire GDP of most countries. But success can be bittersweet. While Jensen became one of the world's richest people, his co-founders took different paths. Curtis Prem, the chief technical officer who helped design NVIDIA's early chips, left the company in 2003 and sold all his shares by 2006. If Prem had kept his shares, he would be worth $70 billion today. Instead, he's worth an estimated $30 million, still wealthy, but a reminder of the power of holding on to equity in a revolutionary company. Chris Malakowski, meanwhile, remains at NVIDIA as a senior vice president. He's been instrumental in developing the GPU technology that powers today's AI revolution, holding dozens of patents and continuing to push the boundaries of what's possible. The competition heats up. But NVIDIA's dominance hasn't gone unnoticed. A new generation of competitors is emerging, each trying to challenge NVIDIA's stranglehold on the AI chip market. AMD, led by the formidable Lisa Su, has launched its MI300 series to compete directly with NVIDIA's data center GPUs. 
While AMD's hardware is competitive, its software ecosystem still lags behind NVIDIA's mature CUDA platform. Intel, traditionally a CPU company, has entered the GPU market with its Arc series. While still behind NVIDIA in performance, Intel's deep pockets and manufacturing capabilities make it a threat to watch. Perhaps more threatening are the tech giants building their own chips. Google's TPUs, Amazon's Tranium, and even Apple's M-series chips represent a trend toward custom silicon that could reduce dependence on NVIDIA, the AI bubble question. But as NVIDIA's stock soars and AI investments flood the market, many are asking, are we in another bubble? The parallels to the dot-com era are striking. In 2024, AI investments surged by 62% to $110 billion, even as overall startup funding declined. AI startups now secure 57.9% of global venture capital investments, eerily similar to the internet boom of the late 1990s. History shows us that AI has experienced winters before, periods when hype exceeded reality and funding dried up. The first AI winter occurred from 1974 to 1980, followed by another in the late 1980s to mid-1990s. Recent developments like DeepSeek's breakthrough in creating high-performance AI models at a fraction of the cost have shaken investor confidence. If AI can be commoditized, what happens to the astronomical valuations we're seeing today? Despite its success, NVIDIA faces significant challenges. The company's dependence on Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, TSMC, for chip production creates vulnerability in an increasingly tense geopolitical environment. U.S. export restrictions have limited NVIDIA's ability to sell its most advanced chips to China, historically one of its largest markets. This has forced the company to navigate complex international relations while maintaining its technological edge. Release of DeepSeek AI from a Chinese company should be a wake-up call. Meanwhile, the very success that has made NVIDIA so valuable has attracted intense competition. Every major tech company is now investing billions in developing alternatives to NVIDIA's chips. Jensen Wang has a vision that extends far beyond today's AI chatbots. He sees a future of physical AI, artificial intelligence that can understand and interact with the physical world. NVIDIA's Omniverse platform is already being used to create digital twins of entire factories, allowing companies to simulate and optimize their operations before building anything in the real world. The company is betting that the same parallel processing power that revolutionized graphics and AI will next revolutionize robotics, autonomous vehicles, and the Internet of Things. Jensen calls this the AI factory era, where data centers become the engines of economic growth, processing raw data and producing valuable intelligence. He predicts this will create an industry worth trillions of dollars. Already, countries around the world are building massive AI infrastructure projects. Together, these world-leading technology giants are announcing the formation of Stargate, a new American company that will invest $500 billion at least in AI infrastructure. Denmark has unveiled its largest sovereign AI supercomputer. Japan and Taiwan are racing to build national AI systems, and India is scaling up its AI capabilities. The implications extend far beyond technology. Goldman Sachs estimates that AI could automate 25% of all work in the US and Europe, potentially boosting global GDP by 7% annually over the next decade. But perhaps the most remarkable aspect of NVIDIA's story is the human element. Jensen Wang, who started as an immigrant child cleaning toilets, has become one of the most influential people in technology. His leadership style is unconventional. He's known for his humility, his willingness to admit mistakes, and his belief that failure is essential to success. He still begins presentations with the reminder that the company is 30 days from going out of business. This mindset has created a culture of innovation and urgency that has allowed NVIDIA to stay ahead of competitors for over three decades. In an industry where companies can become obsolete overnight, NVIDIA has continuously reinvented itself. But investors and analysts are increasingly cautious. Some warn that NVIDIA's current valuation may be unsustainable, especially if AI development slows or if competitors successfully challenge its dominance. The company's stock is notoriously volatile, 
with single-day swings that can add or subtract hundreds of billions from its market value. The recent DeepSeek announcement wiped out $600 billion in a single day. Regulatory challenges are also mounting. As NVIDIA's chips become essential infrastructure for AI development, governments are increasingly concerned about dependence on a single company. So, are we witnessing the birth of a new industrial revolution, or are we in the midst of another speculative bubble? The answer may be both. History shows us that transformative technologies often experience periods of hype, followed by disappointment before achieving their true potential. The internet bubble of 2000 was followed by the genuine transformation of how we work, shop, and communicate. The difference this time may be that AI is already demonstrating real value. From drug discovery to climate modeling, from autonomous vehicles to personalized medicine, AI is solving problems that were previously unsolvable. What we're witnessing may be the early stages of the most significant technological transformation in human history. Just as the steam engine powered the first industrial revolution and electricity powered the second, artificial intelligence may power the third. Jensen Huang believes we're building the infrastructure for a new kind of economy, one where intelligence itself becomes a commodity that can be produced, refined, and distributed like electricity or water. The race is no longer just between companies, but between nations. The countries that master AI first will have unprecedented advantages in military, economic, and technological capabilities. From three engineers in a Denny's restaurant to the world's most valuable company, NVIDIA's story is a testament to the power of vision, persistence, and the willingness to bet on the future. Jensen Huang's journey from toilet cleaner to tech titan embodies the American dream, but more than that, it represents the power of technology to transform not just individual lives, but entire civilizations. Whether NVIDIA maintains its dominance or eventually faces the same cycle of disruption it once brought to others, its impact on the world is already undeniable. The company that helped create the modern gaming industry has now laid the foundation for an AI-powered future. The next time you ask ChatGPT a question, watch a movie with stunning visual effects, or ride in an autonomous vehicle, remember that all of this was made possible by a company that started with $600 and a dream, and nearly went bankrupt before changing the world. The story of NVIDIA is far from over. In fact, if Jensen Huang is right, we're just getting started. The age of artificial intelligence has only just begun. What do you think? Are we witnessing the birth of a new industrial revolution? Or are we in the midst of another speculative bubble? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe for more deep dives into the companies and technologies shaping our future.